Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Weeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile arts dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hello and welcome today to our lovely guest, Philippa Turnbull. Hi, Philippa. Hello, Susan. It's lovely to speak to you today, Philippa. And I have here a quick bio from Philippa. So the Cruel Work Company is a family business launched over 25 years ago by embroidery specialist Philippa Turnbull. Philippa and her daughter, Laura, share a passion for historic embroidery and for keeping the designs and techniques from the past alive and thriving. Their range of historically accurate kits and life-changing needlework retreats in the UK and Ireland are hailed as among the best needlework experiences available. Philip and Laura's ongoing research into historic embroidery allows them to bring you textile information from the historic source, including stitches and techniques long forgotten by current needlework stitch books. Ooh. As such, their range of cruel work kits bring to life the designs, colours and techniques of the 17th to the 20th century while honouring the integrity of genuine cruel work. And as well as developing their kits and retreats, Philippa and Laura work with castles, country houses and museums around Britain to ensure precious private embroidery collections are understood and appreciated by fellow enthusiasts. Oh, that all sounds absolutely lovely. Well, of course, I didn't write that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't spoil things. Really, basically, when I started in 1993, I had sold a design business yeah. and um, I was selling doormats all over the world. So I knew mm. about getting a product out and marketing it. Yeah. And that was tremendous fun. And I also had a little riding school at home and livery stables and two very small children. So you know, I, I had, was sort of multitasking a bit, which is a very good thing for an embroidery business because you do have to be expert yes. at so many things. <laughs> but, you know, we've evolved, thank goodness. And I've, I've shelved all the things that I feel are like homework. And I'm yeah. just doing the things I love now, which is sounds awfully selfish. But um, and, and the, just going back to my point about who wrote that bit. That was Karen, our PR person who's a part-time worker with us. <laughs> so, you know, I wouldn't possibly say that. And if, I, if I'd if i written it, my daughter would have said, oh, mum, you can't say that. For goodness sake, you can't say this. Um, because basically, you know, it sounds, anything you say about yourself, mm-hmm. in a particular needlework where you're very self-absorbed and, uh, yes. and self-employed, it sounds like you're showing off. And in a way, it sounds like you're competing with other people. But our mission is for all needlework businesses to do well and yes. all people to do well. All castles where we use their designs to do well, we do a payback scheme, you know, to everywhere we who generously allows us to use their design. We give them 10 percent of that um, that product. So it's a big amount. So when people sort of look at our price of our kits, you know, they should know that they're donating to the place it's from. And that will be conserved for the next person. Yeah, because I don't like this grab and run rather selfish thing of um take a million photos go home use it for the next 20 years selling my kits you know yeah, I, yeah. I, and and there wasn't a way really of paying back because a lot of these castles are private and they don't have um a sort of gift aid scheme or they're not no. part of the national trust or yeah. you know there might be people who are private people who, who i can donate to the their chosen charity um and that works really really well um and in particular, our, you know, North American friends, Canada and, and America, you know, of course, this idea has been around forever there. But yes. here, it's not that common for needlework businesses to do it because the margins are so small oh, in needlework, right. yeah. as we know. And that's a really great thing. Now, I, I normally kind of start off by asking, you know, what's got you excited? Obviously, I can tell <laughs> the whole business has got you excited to kind of move you from was it doormats and livery stables through into <laughs> embroideries? <laughs> I, was, I was a designer of doormats, <laughs> but I was designing silhouettes, you know, of animals and things. And, and we were copied by three different companies and I sold yeah. the company for a bit of money. That meant that I had some money to begin this business. Oh, how fascinating. Rather, you know, I, I did the bathroom, took my now ex-husband, by the way, <laughs> on a little holiday 
marriage was definitely on its way out then. So, um, so I, I was very focused on m- what I wanted at that moment. And it gave me a, a focus through a very difficult time, especially when my mum was ill and, you know, had dementia and things. It just gave me a focus, really, to keep looking at something that was moving forward. And uh, the people I met in those very early days are still with me, um, you know, either in spirit and I, I kind of hear about, you know, yeah. I listen to their voice, even if they've moved on. Yeah. Um, or, you know, they are still my friends. Many of those people are still my friends. And, um, you know, the Little Embroidery Guild, I began with another friend here in Appleby where we live. Those are my core friends here. And it's because we share that optimism that we can create something that will give us satisfaction, really. That yeah. will, take, will just give us that wonderful feeling of warmth of something working out. However many little cul-de-sacs you go up or any, you know, <laughs> how many fails you've got. And <laughs> believe me, I have an attic full of fails. Um, oh, we'll get onto of, that. Of designs that only I would like ever. <laughs> <laughs> And others that I think nobody will like, and I bring them out and they go, wow, that's the yeah. best thing you've ever done. And yeah. it's, it's just, you know, other people's perception. Uh, I think we're very harsh on ourselves as designers. We are our <laughs> own worst critics. Um, oh, and so sometimes yeah. it's nice to take a step back and to have some words in the way in which other people perceive us can be, you know, really quite A, scary, but B, quite nice as well yes it is I thought it sounded lovely oh well that's very kind of you but when I pick up the phone and people say oh I can't believe I'm speaking to you in person as though I was you know a massive company <laughs> and I think oh, bad luck you've got me because I'm you know if I take your order I'm going to lose it <laughs> Plus, thank god I've got a team of people to, to be efficient and wonderful and perfect in every way uh, in their own little sphere and we we each have our own speciality and mine is being the creative chaotic one well, as my daughter will tell you, I cause everybody a lot of work. So Yes, you stick to your team role there. <laughs> Still, Susan, okay. Well, I've, I've banned my daughter from this. She's actually downstairs. She lives in Barcelona with her family, but they're over for a few months, thank goodness, because we are so busy um, yeah. at the moment with our needlework kit side and the creative side making the new designs, which yeah. I'm very excited about. And she was an arts and crafts specialist at Bonham's Auctioneers. Right. Uh, she studied history. She's at a top university you know she's a very bright girl and very very organized thank goodness um and she did an MBA in business studies in Barcelona when she was first married and a little bit lonely I think yeah. and uh, even through the first pregnancy she was still doing her <laughs> MBA and, and you know, I'll never forget the sight of her in her gown and hat you know taking her award and um it's a tough thing an MBA and she studied our, our now our business it was my business then yeah. wow. and alone and she said mum you know you've struggled for many years I can see how we can make this for the benefit of everybody and you know in, include our fellow embroiderers fellow uh, tutors fellow lecturers you know really make this work and pay people properly I'm afraid I'm on my bandwagon here because you know I was making a loss every time I went to teach uh, and 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 I actually couldn't sustain that as a newly divorced single no, mom. No, There's no way at all I could do that. So I had to do other work. I had to go out and and rep for you know other design companies selling to shops and do all sorts of things for to actually support my business. And so actually my other work was supporting the work that I was charging for to other embroiderers. And that is not sustainable. No, if you yeah. know people are really waking up to the fact that. If you want somebody to be good at something, you need to pay them a fair rate. I'm not saying massive. Nobody will make lots of money at this business. Even however busy we are, Mm. Laura and I only pay ourselves half what our employees earn at the moment. I mean, because we keep growing, you know, it's uh, it's a growing business. But um, it's, it's just really hard for youngsters coming out of the royal school or out of a college to actually make it in this business with debt and on their back yeah and I feel for them because Mm -hmm. and that's why my daughter set up a bursary for royal school of needlework uh, one tutor every year coming out right, lovely. One, one, uh, graduate so we yeah. give a, we give a graduate a thousand pounds basically once yeah. a year and then we employ them so mm-hmm. and then we pay them a very good way, rate um and we employ them at much above their normal rate and that has gone down very well so I don't know how long we can do that for but we just thought that for a start would be a good thing and those tutors have become our friends and 
in a business sense, it's worked very well because mm. we now employ those people we know yeah, on yeah. our retreats and in our festival that's coming up. You know, it's it's uh, it's a, actually was you know, very good research, very cheap research, actually. <laughs> it's like any investment though, isn't it, Philippa? You you mm. invest the time and the effort and yes, the money into people. They invest it back in you because you then know because tours and your festival revolves around that personal touch. You've got yes. people who you can rely on who, who are all on the same page, aren't they? They're all you're all supporting well, each other and supporting the business and it's in their interest yeah. to do so as well. So yeah. Well, we, we had a very, just before COVID, right on, in the first week of March, we had 30-odd ladies and we had four tutors, I think, there. Yeah. And it was so happy. It mm. was just so happy. Yeah, it was yeah. lovely. We had you know, Jessica Grimm from Germany. Amazing, amazing lady. Fantastic. And Kate Barlow, gosh, the funniest tutor I've ever met. And I had no idea she was that funny. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, honestly, I could just cry from laughing. And not funny in the class, which very serious mm. and quiet and lovely yeah. and professional yeah. in the class. But we do a tutor interview in our retreats to give, you know, tutors a bit of a showcase. And of course, yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. wants to ask questions and it gets it all done in one go. So, because I know as a tutor, you know, you ask 30 times over if you've got 30 yeah. ladies there the same question so this sort of podcast or anything that can just get out there is actually very valuable to us um and then you know nikki jarvis and jenny aiden christie all there and wonderful mandy ewing who used to run this studio at the royal school needwork and she's now self-employed and yeah. she's wow she has not got a very high profile in the sort of social media or yeah. that side of it but oh i i did a joint class with her with cool work and I learned so much. <laughs> you know, it's, it, just, it was just lovely. Because when you're teaching all the time, sometimes you don't get a chance to go on other people's workshops. You don't. And other, you know, other guests have said that quite often. You know, it's really yeah. nice to just go and switch off and go to somebody else's class and oh, go to somebody else's so workshop much, just to people. switch your yeah, brain yeah. off. And as you said, learn. So yeah. what I would like to ask you is where the focus on the cruel work came from. Now, it's brilliant that you've explained about Laura. So you've got, you know, somebody there with her MBA helping you to to grow and so on but where did the cruel work inspiration come from out out of all of this and as the foundation for building the business around it I think I was a secret cruel worker (laughs) for quite a long time I I did start when I was six because I'm the I'm the youngest daughter of a family of eight children Ah. so and I have uh, a one younger brother who was very well behaved but I was appalling apparently <laughs> if I was ever taken out in public so I was left with two great aunts um, <laughs> on that uh, Allendale Road in Hexham where I grew up very near Hexham in Northumberland yes no, and well, as a sort of antidote to my flea-bitten rather scruffy mad pony Shetland pony I had <laughs> um, my mum left me there every time she went shopping and these two great aunts um, who didn't have children thought I thought I was just lovely <laughs> it's just lovely <laughs> And it always, you know, if I think of them, it gives me confidence, which I badly need a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a bit of a front, don't you? A bit yeah. of an actor when you're a tutor and a lecturer and things. Um, and and they uh, encouraged me a lot and they taught me to paint um, with watercolours. And, of course, you know, I was in and out of their jewellery and yeah. their dressing up clothes yeah, and the lovely smell sure. of mothballs and all the sort of great art things. So I think that's very common with a lot of my friends and yeah. everybody from Roger that they learn from not necessarily their mother, but the generation before yes which is yes. interesting because my my granddaughter age six Ophelia is she's been stitching since she was 18 months old she's fanatical about oh, it lovely. I can't get my needlework out because yeah. she's in it she's in it um, yeah and she's now doing up and down buttonhole stitch that's oh, yes, oh, so that wasn't bad <laughs> age six anyway so um yeah she's uh I hope she I don't work her too hard really <laughs> I hope she doesn't turn her off right well the cruel cruel work was always my love and yeah. when I went to castles and museums and this sort of thing I was always looking for and looking at cruel work because right. it was the nearest to watercolor painting it's nearest yeah, to painting with something yeah. because although people go on about long and short soft shading in silks the way the wool mixes because it splits itself so gently mm. and, the, and the range of colors you don't have to mix your own colors and I'm I love, I, I can draw, I can draw, but mm. I find painting, I make everything too subtle and it gets very muddy. Whereas uh, when you have wools and the colours chosen for you, really, yeah. um, you, you, actually, you actually know where you're going. So you go up and down a, a scale like music of depth of colour or, you know, the, the range just yeah. goes very gently from one to the next. And Appleton's 
I met Peter, who owned Rappleton's at the time. He was just a lovely bloke with a motorbike and a band and didn't really <laughs> don't know how passionate he was about creating that business. But <laughs> the two ladies that have taken it on in the last 10 years have been amazing. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's gotten a bit more organised now. But at that time, he was kind of, oh, well, it's so out of fashion. And I went to the Royal School and they were not teaching it like they do now is the very first thing you learn. You know, right. it, was, it was not a fashionable thing. And I met Erica Wilson, who was a kind of god of crew work and needlepoint and had been to the Royal School and then gone to America yeah. and lived in New York. And I met her and she encouraged me and said, you know, you can you can kind of be the next Erica Wilson if you wanted to be. Well, obviously I couldn't be, <laughs> but, but <laughs> nobody could be the next Erica. But it... it you know, she really was interested in the historic and bringing it forward to an, and enabling people to do it. Right. And her yeah. stitching technique in crawl work was not precise. It was very loose and very kind of wild. If you look at the old videos, and they're still on YouTube, of Erica stitching, she's kind of attacking it. You know, she really, it's not a, it's, it's not a nitpicky type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it goes with um, enthusiasm and slightly wild nature. And then, and then as you, as you, stitch more and more and more in cruel work you actually start getting neater and neater you can't help it because right. you get into the rhythm of stitching mm. and as a slightly frantic person I just find that I find that so calming ah, and yeah. just love the therapy side of it um and and also because I you know my horsey career I was I was um teaching dressage and that's my main qualifi- teaching qualifications are in horses right um, and it's all about preparation and yeah. calm and 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 how you place your body and the angle of your arms. And I'm really interested in that side, the posture of needlework and how the way people sit um, influences their work. And so when I started teaching groups, I was blooming appalled <laughs> at how people crouch over their needlework or to sit with, you know, to one side or you know, I remember a social worker came here and she was lovely and she said, I'm terribly stressed with my job. And she'd come up for lunch. She'd had a terrible yeah, case. Yeah. That she'd oh. be, and she, she sat with one arm sort of like an injured bird above her head oh. and the other arm was somewhere else. And she held the end of a frame. She wouldn't use my seat frame. She only wanted her roll bar frames and she didn't want a Larry to hold it or anything. Yeah. And she held it sort of with her knee and it was just weird and and I said I don't think that's sustainable sort of sitting like a shell yeah wrapped around like a clam yeah um yeah. and and I sort of set her up differently and she's she 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 wasn't very happy with that either but eventually you know she she just over a three-day course by the end of, she suddenly just got it and she was away and that was very inspiring for me because I wasn't really charging to teach at that time I was sort of experimenting should I do this yeah, or do I yeah. know enough and, and all that and then I went down to the Royal School and did a few courses down there just to sort of check out that I you know I didn't want to say this is the way I think it was done I wanted to know this is the way it was done at that time or at mm. that time but my research has certainly led me down into it really drilled down into the ground material I have my linen made for me the walls that we used in each era and the the people who actually did the design who were separate of course from the people who stitched usually yeah and the amateurs and the professionals and how all that changes right through time um and that it allows each individual actually to pick an era or pick a style they like the look of and go with that style of stitching because each kit that I write the instructions for actually has a different set of instructions, totally different. It isn't, this is how to do cruel stem stitch. It's, this is how to do cruel stem stitch on this particular thing. You know? ah. And this is how to layer up the colours. And um, I have a professional illustrator who works for us full time yeah. doing the drawings for the instructions. And, you know, we, she's, she's, we had to follow her for a couple of months, but she's now back working full time on the future kits, which is great. Yeah, um, yeah. So everybody that we employed before COVID is still in employment and actually growing. In fact, we've taken on this PR girl now because yeah. we've been so busy with the um, uh, social media side. Of- you know, what, what do you think has triggered that? Is it a steady increase or can you notice, oh, there was no. COVID and oh, off we, off we go? Susan, it was bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing was, of course, because... You know, I had to. I had to distance. My husband had to distance. We we have a big Victorian house, and we run the floor. We have half the house is the business, basically. Yeah, it's yeah. Business, 
and on two levels. And um, I soon learned why these girls had very slim thighs. <laughs> two girls who work for me full time were always legging it up and down, down three flights. And stuff. So that's gone. We're now on one level. <laughs> so poor girls, you know, it took me to do their job full time. And I was working 10 hour days and yeah. my husband would come in and find me crying. <laughs> so, oh, I've got to get this order done before 10 o'clock because Phil the postman was very kindly coming and collecting it at five in the morning the next day. Oh, and normally I get up early and do everything. And, uh, you know, really bad in the evenings and, and he used to come every day and collect from the wendy house which is a wooden house in the in yeah. the garden but, and and you know nobody else in appleby got that service i promise you <laughs> he was just so nice and we were sending out so many orders of starter sets of yeah. scissors ah. the frame the you know everything a bag yeah. you know a lot wow. of enthusiasm a lot of encouragement so we've had a lot of newbies lot of newbie um questions that I was emailing away you know answering every single one myself and then Karen who is our uh, the our lady she said look Philippa you know we can do a Q&A every Wednesday and yeah you can, perfect I'll, I'll collect all the questions and you answer them and she she'll say well, look we've had five of the same question because mm. her daughter Katie is is now videoing herself every day Katie's a lot more photogenic than me believe me and <laughs> obviously and gorgeous and a newbie you know literally eight weeks ago she'd never done it so wow. she's, she's gone from a total beginner and now she's doing a really quite advanced kit and oh gosh it's really educational for me because she's I can't teach her you know she's distanced she's yes, she's got yes. she's got to be on her own as well and um so I, although she, I can see the roof of her house from my attic, I can't <laughs> actually be with her in the same room. It's so frustrating. So occasionally I send a slightly waspish little text saying, get your quite a bit shorter, Katie. Sit up straight, Katie. <laughs> Poor Katie. <laughs> and she, she, when she does this daily little sort of stitch along, she said, oh, Philippa says this. And, and she's advised me that. And I'm thinking, no, I didn't. I shouted it from my <laughs> door, Katie. <laughs> Get your oh. shoulders back, girl. <laughs> but anyway, she's she's absolutely darling. Of course, everybody that works with me has to be very good natured to cope. <laughs> um, and certainly, Karen and her daughter Katie have been a great addition um, to the full time people, Georgina and Frankie, who are yeah. sisters. We're kind of having little family wow. pods here. So it's yeah. right near my oh, daughter. That's lovely, though, isn't it? But and the two and the two sisters, we kind of call them girls because they're you know about 20, thirty rather. <laughs> yeah. um, but they're actually young women and and um, we're very, very proud of how their skills have matched our skills and, and together we've moved forward with lots of suggestions from them as well. That's super. Um, and what I really like is the fact there that it's giving you valuable insight into somebody who's just starting and they're just starting now, whereas you've been doing it that long and mm. you've got, to, you know, you're just imbued with it. That yes. getting that refresh, the refreshing insight of somebody who's just starting again, I think is extremely valuable as a, as a, as a teaching aid, as a, as a business aid, as a, a way of, yeah, creating content. Because, I mean, that's the thing. Everyone's always got questions, and that is the most perfect way yeah. for anybody listening here is wondering, oh, what the hell can I post on social media? Answer questions. One question, yeah. one thing. It's yeah. the most perfect way, and people will find you and start to follow you and you know and all, and all the rest of it I, I mean I don't do anything with Instagram yeah. uh, Laura and Karen do that I, I only do the Facebook answers so but Karen's bring, she sort of collects them in <laughs> and puts them all in a in a you know spreadsheet obviously yeah. so that she then just whatsapps me all the questions or emails them and people are anonymous pretty well oh, they you know they might want their name mm. on if they have put their name on that's great I, I yeah. say you know so and so from you know, Susan Weeks <laughs> has asked this question of me. Um, <laughs> well, I'll start plaguing you with questions now. <laughs> it's interesting the questions people ask, even after they've done a whole design, yeah. which has said the things I will repeat. But you see, you know, it's the old teaching thing of you tell somebody what you're going to teach, yeah, you yeah. tell them it, and then you tell them what they've learned. Yeah. And that three none of us absorb everything that we read or look no, at or no, watch no, and of course you you know you would keep repeating it and uh, rather Karen's rather taught me that and Katie in particular you know she's she's a girl with a you know first class degree <laughs> she's actually a lawyer <laughs> and and here am I an embroidery teacher telling her what to do which is great because she even Katie who pays attention is, is doing this as a bit of a job yeah and wants to get it right she's very eager to get it right even she comes out with the same questions again or yeah. 
slightly doesn't hear the, about mm. the shorter thread thing <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> um, or she asks a, a question that is obvious to me, but is not obvious to a total beginner. No. And you do forget what a beginner really, yeah. really needs yeah. to know. And yeah. um, I mean, when I'm on my uh, retreats, which sadly we can't do at the moment, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been um, when I'm on my retreats, th- that's a lovely thing because you're actually with people for quite a long time, whether it's a residential or traveling one. And they can ask, I would say, please ask the stupid question. Yes. Because there is not a stupid question mm. because if you, if I've missed something vital, I really want somebody to tell me, you know, for goodness exactly. sake. Exactly, yeah. And everybody yeah. else learns because you can guarantee if somebody's got it in their head and is brave enough to say, everybody else goes, oh, I was going to ask that as well. <laughs> or if it's a very advanced question, yeah. I will probably know how to get the answer. I will probably yeah. know the curator of the you know the vna or the or the yeah. national museum of scotland which have an amazing collection of cruel work or um you know uh, or, or, the, or the burrell has a very good collection yeah all i i will be able to say something about a georgian piece of cruel work but i could actually refer them to somebody else or ask them, that person myself if it's something they want read out in public so that works very well because th- there are so many questions to ask when you drill down and you become uh, a narrow in your in your in what you want to know so yes. i've never been tempted really to go i'm I, you know i'm a fan of detached buttonhole stitch and i love the whole elizabethan palaver but i've never really been tempted to come away from cruel work because there's right. so much more to learn and i yeah. You know, my my daughter always says she'll kill me if I die before I write it all down. (laughs) But I I thought that if I record it, you know, my weaver, who's massively uh, well known worldwide for historic weaving in Scotland, he he's he's actually got four people uh, record uh, writing out transcribing his recordings about weaving because it's yeah. so important yeah um, yeah and, and I'm so excited that that's that's all being going to oh we just don't want these things to get lost do we and and, and in, in some respects I know people kind of cringe about video or whatever but it can actually be the fastest way to get your message out and get your thoughts down rather than umming and ahhing over every word as you kind of painfully try and type it out it it, it, it can be so much faster when my married my latest husband <laughs> my current husband as they say keep him on his toes <laughs> he's lovely I kept my first marriage name but Turnbull because it goes the L's all go together for the Turnbull and that's what I was known as so I kept that for work yeah. but he he just told me that the FN button on the bottom left corner of my laptop just press that twice and you record on word and my my laptop knows it's cruel work with c-r-e-w-e-l you know yeah. not the other way yeah um it soon, it soon when you self when you uh, correct it, it soon goes to your um, voice and to yeah. your spellings, your particular words, because of course some of them are in American spelling, mine is in English spelling, Richard's is in Scottish spelling. <laughs> 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 Very broad Scotsman, but he has really helped me a lot on on the technology side brilliant, and the lecturing brilliant. side and yeah. being confident and you know famous composers he's written about you know they've all said I feel like an imposter I feel I don't know enough everybody you know? says that yeah and, and everybody says that mm-hmm. and, and I and my, my thing to pass on to other tutors you know who are 30 years behind me in experiences the FN button <laughs> just <laughs> press it whenever you have a thought just put it down and just have it as an ongoing word document or notes or whatever you use I use a Mac so you know it's all different so I, I just 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 put it down yeah, and then yeah. one day one day just go in there and just subdivide it into different folders and then you've got your book you know you've got mm. your original thoughts and yes brilliant. that's what everybody wants everybody wants yeah. to know your perception of your expertise and, and yes. I love hearing I know one of the reasons I do the retreats I'm learning so much mm. I, everybody I go to and I, I see so many collections and I can find something in a private collection to compare with something in a museum and something else in a, you know in America or wherever and just think that yes that is actually from the same studio and it came from about the time that the um just after we had the great five london and we had these new huguenots coming in and uh we were they they gave special dispensation to a new group of people who'd been persecuted in france come up through the low countries and come into britain in lots of different cities and set up studios and they were allowed to and even in London they were allowed to set up <laughs> because so many of our studios had been burnt down and we'd lost people, so many people 
right experts and and so these new designs new colors new weaving techniques new dyes all came in so you can spot those can't you because you, you've looked at this so much now i'm on it Susan, with, with your work i don't think i could with anything else but I, I i can see how the influences of black work you know have come through and um and the designs and the designs that have been used from past publications and pamphlets and um you know i spotted pretty quickly that the the fishing lady in america that they call the fishing lady is queen anne mm-hmm. um and and that was interested and they called it the stripy lady i was like oh no, that's queen anne that's queen yeah. anne. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually for my for my birthday which was two days ago my husband gave me a coin because what we got together on we were both fascinated with james VI of scotland and when he left in 1603, when um, Queen Elizabeth died, yeah. and became James the First of England, and James yeah. the Sixth of Scotland, and you're kind of Northern too, so you know all about this. Yeah, um, <laughs> and we were just left, weren't we? We were just yeah. left in the North of England. We just went, and the whole of Scotland was deserted, but it actually wasn't. But this uh, coin shows that they were still minting coins after he'd left with James the Sixth on, <laughs> not James, but you know, in Scotland. So the date is actually 1605 on this silver coin. So right, and it has a really perfect silhouette of him and not not the later glamorized um portraits of him tra- trying to make him a little bit better you know oh, right he's pretty rough rough man apparently <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> entirely intelligent but you know pretty uncouth in many ways <laughs> oh god right so so many stories philippa what would you say I mean, you've got so many high points. I always like to pick a high point, get someone to pick a high point. What, what's, what would you say has been the high point of, of what you've achieved so far? Well, I always love it when you have an idea and other people say yes. Yeah. And I think a high point is actually not cruel work, actually, <laughs> funny enough. But Lady Anne Clifford, uh, who lots of people heard me talk about, um, sorry to be boring, but you just look her up. Okay, <laughs> Lady Anne yeah. Clifford. We got government funding to recreate the costume, the 1619 costume of uh, Lady Anne Clifford, which is in a portrait owned by her descendant, Lord Hothfield, who's a friend in Appleby. And um, it's all about the Pembrokes and the Cliffords. And I live in Pembroke House in Clifford Street, and I can look at Appleby Castle from my house i see the norman tower from my house which is lit up at night it always fascinates the grandchildren because they they're waiting for elsa and anna from frozen yes. pop out they're disappointed that it's just mrs nightingale mm-hmm. <laughs> who's very nice but you know she's not elsa anyway um yeah the high point was that the group i set up when i first moved to appleby in 1997 and they were among my first friends um 32 people and <laughs> we all set up this Bob, barbara and i and others set up the Embroiders Guild here, which is now the textile group here. Yeah. Um, they all, a lot of them said, "Oh yeah, we'll do it. I'll, I'll do the tailoring, and I'll do this, and I'll do that." And and I got funding. I got the fantastic Sarah Thursfield, who's the medieval tailor's assistant. And you know, I was told about Sarah through another friend, yeah. um, Jackie Hyman, who's a conservator in in Manchester. You know, it's all just asking people, "Do you know somebody who will?" And yeah, yeah. But we got government funding and Sarah came and managed us because we're pretty unmanageable prior to spot. <laughs> We've had far too much fun over the years. And everybody used their expertise and um, you know, I couldn't I could never have done it. You know, I'm not yeah. a metal thread embroiderer. Yeah. Um, and, wow. and Val Osborne, who's a very good friend, she did a fantastic amount of it. And we've been working on this for about six or seven years and we're we're complete now and um the lace on the piece jill dye she did masses of research and she's submitted her papers to the vna Um, groundbreaking stuff really good research and and i'm proud that i had the idea of doing it and yeah i'm I'm not proud that i can't do (laughs) you know i can't write the book the next lot of funding just coming in we hope which is to write the book about recreating the costume and i i like that whole thing of crossing over into the world of reenactors who a lot of them very young very enthusiastic dying to learn surface embroidery um, and I, I like stepping into that world and seeing what they're looking at when they look at textiles right yes different thing a totally different yeah will it go in the washing machine because my husband yeah it's, it's, it's you know blood the axe blood or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's uh it's a different it is such a different world so and and to, to look at uh, textiles from the view of a curator in a, in a museum who's handling things every day, although not handling things. Yes, um, yes. And and somebody 
you know, it was on last night on the telly. Phil Spencer was doing his stately home thing. If you can get that on on uh, BBC Four, and I'm sure it went worldwide. And he was at where was he? He was at Hampton Court Palace, oh, and sure. where the where the uh, yeah. embroidery school used to be, and where the Royal School still is. Oh, now, yeah. And he was with Ellery. Well, Ellery, the creator there, is the lady who discovered the backup. Um, a, a alter frontal, which of course was Elizabeth I's dress, and she did yes. all the research on that. Oh, right. And that is fantastic. That uh, you know, she's actually my daughter's cousin. <laughs> funnily enough, <laughs> oh, the circle goes <laughs> round and round. She's, yeah, she's my daughter's cousin's wife. <laughs> That's it. Yes. <laughs> so, so, uh, so you know, I don't know her. I don't know her at all, actually, yeah. because they yeah. kind of married, and that was the family I divorced from. So I didn't. I haven't really met her. So Laura's in touch with her, and that's great because um, you know it's exciting to to know that with it, even with my family, I've known lots of people who are yeah. doing similar things and attracted to similar things. But anyway, she even she last night said to Phil Spencer because he was almost reaching out to touch it, and yeah, I was ready. I was ready to smack him with smack the rest it. of the nation. I'm sure. Um, you know, we love Phil, but we, yeah. we all want to don't, smack don't. him. <laughs> But anyway, um, that aside, and she said, I even with gloves on, I never touch it. This is just an amazing piece, you know, and I, I have nightmares about somebody trying it on. <laughs> and then you can see that. And and I think that the value of textiles has it's not gone up massively financially because I've been collecting crew work for 30 years and it's mm. it's, ne- it's 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 always been about the middle of of, of cost, really. Occasionally yeah, yeah. you get a bargain, but only if it's falling apart, and then yeah. I recreate it to try and understand it. So it's valuable to me, but yes, maybe yes. not as a decorative object which yeah. a lot of people use us. but um but it's it's good that you know they have thousands of dresses in Hampton Court thousands in their costume collection that that's being so well looked after yeah so, you know yes. amazing it's, it's and such a skill isn't it preserving all of these these old things yeah and, and some so much in private hands that I hear about uh when we do our retreats and I'm you know you drill down into mm. what people do and what their interests are and some of them collect this and some of them collect that and they're really looking after them very well because the knowledge is out there on the internet of what to do and how to look after them or the knowledge is out there where to contact to how find to out. find the person yeah, yeah. Wow. so and so we are conserving it for the future brilliant, which is brilliant. great you know so that's you know I suppose the culmination of everything you've been working towards as well isn't it so I love the the recreation and I did see must have been blog posts so you know videos something I, I, I do you know I've seen lots about the Lady Anne Clifford but I wasn't really yes. quite sure of the back backdrop to it so is is that on your website or is there a separate place that we can there point is, people is, to thank you um there is a blog about it right uh, about, that must be what I've been watching and and it's actually Katie in the latest photos of it right. um, who's our the daily vlogger at the moment yes. daily, daily videos from Katie so it's her in it in the costume but we've also had Georgina in the costume who's been, we looked amazing in it because she's got she, she kind of looks a little like Lady Anne sometimes when she looks severe <laughs> so that was good <laughs> Katie's quite which is slightly squarer face, so yeah. a little bit younger than um, than than Lady Anne was at the time. Um, I think at this portrait was when she was pregnant, which is when these portraits were painted, uh, right, because right. obviously you know many many women died in childbirth, yes, yes, and they needed a record of what the mother looked like <laughs> and, Crikey, and yeah. to prove to prove that the legitimacy of that child, yeah, because. You know, they wanted to make sure that that child was theirs and of their family, so that they could inherit. So, oh, crikey! Uh, what what a thought, though. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm painting your portrait in case you die. Oh, crikey! Oh well, absolutely. Oh, and, and you, yes, and you have to be very, very rich indeed to have a portrait painted, but also yeah. to have a portrait painted just for the hell of it. Yeah, <laughs> but a crikey. lot of those portraits, um, they replicated them, and Radio Anne did a lot of this. The upper half of the portrait, and I sometimes wonder. Obviously, that was cheaper, and it was more mm. fashionable to hang just half a portrait yeah. um, in a dining room, as, as taste changed in the 18th century. So a lot of them were chopped in half, but they they, they did actually recreate a lot, just half portraits. And I just wonder if they just didn't want it to be, oh, God, that pregnant woman again, you know, yeah. <laughs> that look. Yeah. They, just, they just wanted their face looking amazing. So uh... oh. Right. Um, and, and so as we kind of wrap up, Philip, because we could talk forever, and I know you do have another meeting as well, um, 
really, I suppose we're looking, trying to look forward. I mean, things are all still very much up in the air. Um, do you have, what, what have you got penciled in for next year? Uh, you know, I presume, you know, you're, you're creating kits all the time. Is there anything specific that you, you're all focused, looking forward to as well? Well, I am looking forward to a lot, actually. Yeah. Um, because Laura's here at the moment, we can really plan and get together and, you know, be in the same room, which is great. We're all living in the same house, six of us at the moment, oh, her family of four, and me and my husband, and yeah. well, and a dog and three hens and two cats. So we're very <laughs> happy uh, in lockdown, semi-lockdown in the UK this this just at this moment. Yeah. And um, I'm looking forward to releasing uh, an arts and crafts design, which is a mirror frame, that I would never have done if I hadn't had a daughter who is an arts and crafts specialist ah, and, right, yeah. and fanatically keen on Aesop's fables. So this is loosely designed around the animals from Aesop's fables. How lovely. So it's the Aesop's fables frame. So I'm looking forward to that. And there are 11 separate designs from it. That, so we're going to release those as a subscription, which will right. be yeah, your first to know this season. My daughter will kill me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do, you me to, right, do you want me to edit this out? <laughs> No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Because, no, <laughs> it's all right. I, I won't say nobody's listening, but, you know, yeah. it's, who, who cares, really? Um, and that's exciting. And um, at the moment, we've got a, an embroiderer in, um, in America stitching a new, very large piece, uh, which uh, I bought from Meg Andrews, the antique dealer in London, who's a fantastic expert as well. So that's great. So we've got that coming on for next year. Super. Um, yeah. We've got a re- the retreats that uh, we may have to, we may have to delay. We're yeah. just going to see how that goes. Just see how you go we with it. Cannot yeah. tell. We've got everything set in place for having something online and another event um, online if if people can't come. So yeah. we've just yeah. with that we've only got a small deposit from everybody. We're not. We've, we they know what they're booked in to be taught. That all the tutors know what they're teaching. But we are ready if it d- has to be postponed a year. So that would be the same dates following year. And you know who knows what is happening. Um, yeah, but so difficult, just, isn't it? You know, plan for the worst and yeah. hope for the best. And yeah, that's and, th- and then you can be pleasantly surprised when it uh, if it happens can't you really rather than being disappointed that it didn't yeah but I think because everybody is very online about everything now um, or most people are I think this is hugely to the benefit of needlework I think Mm -hmm. this is going to improve our communication our needlework our stitching um, our fails you know I think people are being kinder because we're all in a slight set, set, state of crisis at the mm-hmm, moment. True, um, true. And, um, you know, with needlework, I can forget that that's going on for a while. Mm. And I really hope that other people can. Um, I, too, am obsessed by the news. I'm obsessed by the American election, by <laughs> our own government in the UK and what's happening in France. And, of course, what's happening in Spain. My son's in Hong Kong. You know, we're, I'm getting a global view yeah, of everything yeah. from my right own tiny family. But it's, it's um, just... Uh, you know just hoping that everybody comes through this in, in this kind and generous and friendly way as possible it just gives us a way to focus on something else doesn't it and and how lovely to be able to focus on embroidery and textile art and that's been a, a really we're strong lucky. theme that's come out yeah. so yeah yes, we're lucky we're very lucky and all the new people coming in just you know we've just got to be very inclusive and make sure that we don't go oh, what are you doing that for yes. of, course, of course you should be doing it the other way my way you know and I have to correct myself a lot on that on Facebook because I've seen some comments on Facebook and I think oh you're a little bit mm. <laughs> that's a bit waspish but perhaps they'd had a bad day and they were just being a bit horrible but, you know everything we write in on Facebook it's it's a terrible responsibility when you're well known for doing a kit but um I, I just want to give a shout out to some of my really lovely embroidery friends like Alison Cole yeah she's just doing so well so much energy going on and her husband you know like my husband really there for her every minute every day you know making sure that everybody gets their orders it has been a huge huge problem trying to get things you know for us as well going from one house to the next in Appleby in the car. My husband's gone around, you know, the walls to be packed by so-and-so. Katie yeah. doing the overlocking, you know, Frankie doing the something else. And se- me sending out the orders from home base. And, then, and I'm terrible at it, you know, very, very bad at it. So it's, it's, I've had to concentrate three times more than ever, you know, I've done on anything else. 
and answer the phone and answer the emails and answer everything else. And thank goodness, you know, I'm lucky now that we can work in a more cohesive way. Yeah, and especially yeah. for right here. Oh, goodness, it's much easier. And she is, by the way, runs a whole other team of people in Barcelona. She's got somebody who's a project manager and um, somebody doing the website, somebody doing the advertising. You know, it's managing people um, without being able to meet for a coffee in a cafe. It's, yeah. It's almost against nature, isn't it? <laughs> it, 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 it is It is a challenge. And so in this instance, it really does take a village to keep something going. And, and actually, you've kind of got a village and a city on the go as well. well we, we've, yes, it, it, I mean, we'll be, you, I'm sure, doing you know more just Laura and I eventually. But now that we're together more of that side of things and the PR and stuff. But, you know, we realise the value through having to do it with other people. We realise the value of having them and hope that we can keep the business the sort of size that sustains decent pay for everybody yeah, and decent yeah. jobs. And yeah. not asking, you know, I don't, I don't have a sister down the road who's currently unemployed who'll come in and just step in when mm. I want. I, I actually pay, you know, we, we proper, pay people properly. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a sort of slave trade thing. You know? no, <laughs> she really I, shouldn't. No. I have ancestors who did that, Susan, and I'm, I'm ashamed of that. Oh. You know, I want to get away. I want everybody, if we do well, I want everybody to do well. And obviously Laura and I, in particular, Laura, she has a very modern approach and that is the modern way to do business really. Uh, not, not to compete with other people, but to try and be the best yourself and to try and include any successes with the team you've got and and I hope that that's what we do that's what we aim for all the time and I think that's a fantastic attitude and that's just a brilliant way to end an extremely fascinating chat today Philippa thank you so much for sparing us some time and sharing your wow your absolute amazing encyclopedic knowledge of everything and we have just scratched the surface thank you so much everyone will be absolutely fascinated with our conversation today and your links are all on your episode of stitchery stories so people can follow you on there for the website i'll find the lady ann clifford blog as well and many other links and so forth in there so everybody you can go and follow the cruel work company you're on instagram aren't you and facebook as you say oh i think we're on everything <laughs> on everything tune in for q and a's i think the instagram is amazing with that's a very growing but when I think people had a bit of a leery time with Facebook, but um, I, I am the one on Facebook. If you want to ask anything, um, I don't answer to private messages at all because yeah. it just, I, I never get to It stitch. goes on, it goes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do, I do too. Um, and the Q and A's and things, it's fine. But you Fabulous. can always contact us through the website. And, you know, if we can help anybody in, in particular, young designers who are struggling, you know, that's a, I struggled, you know, and I mm. started in my early middle age and I'd already run three successful businesses and I struggled and I found it very hard. So, you know, I, I think I think what I want to just say is goodbye, but please everybody be very kind when somebody's inexperienced and they're a newbie because it's very daunting and you could easily put them off a very successful career. Yeah, oh, that's fabulous. Thank you so much, Philippa. And everybody, you know where to follow her now. And um, we'll, we'll catch up with you later, Philippa. Thank you so much. Here we go. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, then please join the Stitchery Stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released. It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and information around this podcast. Please visit stitcherystories.com. Of course, you can listen to Stitchery Stories on plenty of podcast apps at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and plenty more besides. You can also ask your smart speaker to play Stitchery Stories podcast too. But wherever you listen, why not leave us a rating and a review to encourage other people to listen too. I very much appreciate you taking the time to do that for me. So that is the end of our Stitchery Story for today. Keep stitching, keep smiling and keep creating your very own Stitchery Stories.